acts of conduct fail and so the principle of lawlessness prevails. That's what we see in Ukraine. The events which were provoked in Ukraine are the symbol of the policy of containment. Later on in this hour, we will discuss what Vladimir Putin is doing and is also not doing in Europe right now, because certainly what is happening in the Ukraine has the attention of the world, it should have the attention of the United States. But right now, we are reminded daily with fact and fiction on what is occurring minute by minute at the American-Mexican border. Headlines that scream hyperbole, but also issue a constant warning about where America is heading as a country and where some people seem to be taking it without the approval of the masses. Also, those think tank rooms across Washington and the nation, plans already being made, on how to make it all work for politicians who demand your vote. Let's welcome into Midpoint former Deputy Staff Secretary to President Bill Clinton and veteran Democratic strategist David Goodfriend joins us today. David, thank you so much for being here today. Oh, thanks for having me, and congratulations to Newsmax on being distributed on DirecTV and DISH. You guys are really going places. It's an honor to be here. Thank you much, and it's also a pleasure to have you on board here as we start to launch this hour and talk more about the immigration issue. Let me first get your opinion on what has happened today. The president initially asking for $2 billion to deal with the immigration issue. Now he has up to $3.8 billion. I have to tell you something. We have just heard from a lot of our viewers uh, on social media, and they are angry about doubling the cost of this because I think the American public wants to know where all this money is going. Yeah, I think you'll find sort of universal agreement that the immigration system we have today is terribly broken. And I think if you recall, before this crisis emerged, there were actually calls from Latino leadership in the United States, from the Democrats and Congress, uh, for the president to not put such an emphasis on interdiction at the border and deportations. You recall that people were saying that the president had deported more uh, it, it, uh, undocumented immigrants than any of his predecessors. And that was the call from the left. That was before this crisis emerged. Now, as some of your uh, emails and social media uh, feedback indicate, you have a different kind of anger. You know, why are we not stopping more of the uh, immigrants coming into the country, why uh, the request for more money. And you can see how those are both anger responses, but from completely different perspectives. And I think it really ought to impel all of us to get serious about immigration reform. You know, the Senate passed on a bipartisan, overwhelming majority an immigration reform bill that the House leadership won't even bring up for a vote. That's the frustration we Democrats feel. Yes, there's a problem. Let's all acknowledge that. There's been a real proposal that Republicans and Democrats support in the Senate. Why won't the House leadership bring it up for a vote? Just one vote. Well, That's the sort of uh, rallying cry you hear. It, though, when a president says he's going to ask for so much money and then asks for twice the money, and then there is a for twice the money, and then there is a, a real yep. question as to what he is doing in the first place, and then does not decide to go to the border, says he won't go there and at least look at what's happening. There is a, a, a little grief going on between he and Texas Governor Rick Perry right now. It does, and again, from right. a strategy side of things, from your side, it does lead the general public to believe that we have a president right now who is basically just shooting from the hip, if you will, and doesn't have a real plan on what he's going to do, does it not? Well, the, the upping of the budget request, I think, I'm guessing here, I have no inside knowledge about this, but I'm guessing that the, the situation on the border is literally so fluid and changing rapidly that for anybody to try to set a mark of how many additional Border Patrol agents or National Guard agents would be necessary is sort of like shooting at a moving target. So I, I don't fault the, the folks at the White House for, for changing their budget request. What I, what I guess I fault the White House for is for once again reverting to deportation as the answer. I don't think that's been proven effective, and I think what we ought to be doing is focusing on an overall reform of our immigration system. By the way, I also think if, if you're a person of faith, as I am, we should also acknowledge the fact that a lot of these people are children who are coming without parents to flee violence. And I think we ought to be at least acknowledging the fact that there is a real humanitarian issue here with children fleeing violence in their uh, uh, home countries, we ought to at least have, as Americans, we ought to have uh, some empathy towards that before we even get to, you know, what's the right policy. There's some real pain among, among children right at our borders, and we should at least acknowledge that as, as human beings. Let me talk about what you just said here, a couple of things you mentioned. First of all, you talked about deportation being effective. Would it not be fair to say, though, that there are people here, there are citizens, there are people specifically along the border who say that we haven't seen it work at all? 
So what about any sort of yeah. idea to make something effective here? Because nothing has worked and nothing seemingly has been done. We talk about deportation effectiveness, but people on the border don't right. see it. So again, from a strategy standpoint, if you look at it, it is a president who is not taking care of the things that need to be done. So where does he go from here? Well, okay, so let's shift gears. Uh, you sort of asked this in a, in a strategy political sense. Let's shift gears Please. and talk about what might be the political fallout from all this. So as I see it, if you look at the electoral map and the states where the Latino vote really has a tremendous impact on which way the state goes, so I'm talking about Florida, Colorado, Nevada, New Mexico. Um, these are places, Arizona increasingly. Um, the sentiment among the Latino community is that Republicans are, are not acknowledging the, the pain that families are experiencing. They rather are, are saying, stay out. We well, don't But I think the Republicans, you. though, if and you look at it from that instance, please, uh, let, me, let me interrupt for a moment. Yeah. I think what will happen in no, that please, sense, the people here will say, we're not being looked at. The people here who are in America, and right. I've heard this from a lot of people, are saying, right. fine, let's worry about one thing, but we can't pay for this. Our country is being overrun, they will say. Our communities are being no, used. I, I get There's that. There's a change here, That's so right. how do you then reconcile that? So our, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great question. So again, uh, it's a balancing act, right? The states that I just mentioned, and Colorado is a prime example, uh, Latinos have played an absolutely decision maker role in which way that state goes in presidential elections, in gubernatorial elections, in Senate elections. So it's sort of like who's going to offend the base on the other side more? If Republicans are offending a, a Latino base that then votes Democratic, are Democrats losing? Uh, uh, American votes on the other side, let's say, to the extent there is another side. I think what we've seen, though, is on balance, the Republican Party has lost more than the Democratic Party has lost on this particular issue when it comes to how the electoral map shakes out. So if we look at the midterms in a state like Colorado, where Mark Udall is up for re-election, will the president's lack of results on the border hurt him with uh, uh, white voters in Colorado more than the Republican sort of vituperativeness against immigration will hurt a uh, Republican candidate, uh, Cory Gardner. In my estimation, as I look at the number, what's happening now is motivating Latino voters to vote Democratic more than to vote Democratic more than it is dissuading non-Latinos to vote Republican. And in that sense, it is having an impact on the electoral map. In the states that I mentioned, again, Florida, Colorado, Nevada, New Mexico, this is sort of the new swing state on, on the map, and this is going to have an impact on the midterms. I don't see how it could not have an impact. But again, there's nobody's a hero here. Nobody looks good. The president right, well, let doesn't me touch look good. Right on that, where you talk about nobody good. being a hero, it sounds as if almost what you're saying, and what many other people have said as well, is that instead of really searching for answers and results here, no matter which side of the aisle you're on, the other side is simply just waiting for the other side to screw up and then go ahead and basically yeah, take advantage of I that. I agree. Well, I mean, look, I, I still have to come back to the Senate vote. There was a place where Republicans and Democrats came together in extremely large numbers. I mean, that was a veto-proof majority coming out of the Senate on an immigration. Careful not to just couch this in terms of purely partisan terms. That was a bipartisan vote. That was a bipartisan vote. That bill has passed and is sitting in the House. Now, I don't know how a House vote would turn out. Maybe it wouldn't pass the House. But again, there is a, there is a logical argument to be made that especially in light of what's going on the border, there ought to be at least a vote up or down on what the Senate passed. Would the House agree to what the Senate passed? We don't know because no one's called a vote. And in that sense, I really wish that Speaker Boehner and the Republican leadership would say, fine, we'll, we'll put this out for a vote. But look, let's be realistic. Right before a midterm election, they're not going to do it. They're All not right. going to bring it up for a vote. Got it's, about too, it's too divisive on the Republican side. i got about two minutes left here. Let's look at next year, and let's look at that okay. strategy side of things, which you've worked on for so many years. Where does the president go from here strategically in order to at least try and get other members of the country, other parties, other people on his side again? Um, and with respect to immigration or just or generally? With respect to immigration. Well, um, you know, if I knew the answer to that question, I'd go uh, <laughs> sell my, my advice to, <laughs> to the Democratic Party. I, um, what would I you think suggest? That, that they're, they're, well, uh, okay, I'll, I'll tell you what I would suggest. Uh, business in this country 
supports immigration reform. And I, when I say business, I mean the agribusiness sector, the technology sector, which seeks you know, more H-1B visas and skilled uh, workers from other countries. If we can actually get the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, the business community, with, with deep ties to the Republican Party, to push more for a bipartisan approach to immigration reform, I think that would do the trick. I really do. What I don't know is whether at this late stage in the president's uh, term, second term, this is his last two years, will the business community invest that kind of political capital? We have seen some of the tech companies like Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook, et cetera, form a coalition and try to push for it. I'm talking about businesses that have a long-standing, deep relationship with the Republican Party, and I've mentioned some of them, agribusiness, uh, technology, I would also add energy to that. They have a vested interest in immigration reform. They really do, and they want it. Will they invest their political capital to get it? That's where I would push. I don't, the president doesn't need to take credit for it, <laughs> but that's where I would push to try to move us to get there. All right, it's a good start at least. I tell you what, we have so much strategy to discuss here and everything else that's going on. We're all out of time, unfortunately. David, it's a pleasure to have you here oh, on the well. show. Let's absolutely do it again Thanks because I'm me. certain we're not going to run out of things to talk about here as we head for the midterms. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me. All right. Thank you so much. All right. As we head towards the midterms, we ask you now, because much of what you have heard right here, it always figures into what we talk about here. Send us a tweet. Send us an email. Let us know on Facebook, because here at the Newsmax TV Network and on Midpoint, we question everything.